Hey Web World, Scotty D. Welcome to a quick product review video today about microphone boom arms. And I've got a brand new boom arm sent over courtesy of my good friends over at Wow's Box. You can find a link to them in the video description below. This is not that boom arm. This is my old boom arm. And you're asking yourself then, why the heck are you showing this if you've got a new boom arm? Well, it's simple because I want to show you the difference between an entry level boom arm to a quality professional boom arm. I've been using this one for about four years now, and this is definitely an entry level boom arm in all respects. Not a bad one, but it's truly an entry level boom arm. Um, let me walk you through some of the elements that I didn't like about this one so that you can compare and contrast with this compared to the one sent over from my friends at Wow's Box. This one has this big wire nest here in the center. Uh, this is the end that you would plug into your microphone preamp or your mixer. And this is the end that you would plug into your microphone. So hence, this is where you would mount your microphone. So let's start with this end and work ourselves all the way down to this end. So this is where you would mount your microphone, uh, either your shock cradle or the microphone itself. I had to add this piece right here because the threads that come with this are coarse threads and they don't fit with a standard shot cradle or microphone mount of any of my microphones that I use. So I had to use this right here, which is kind of a step adapter that changes from coarse threads to the fine threads that are used by my shot cradle and my microphone. So that's the first thing that I didn't like about it because it seems as if this right here is the same thread and the same mount that they would use if this boom arm were to be used by kind of like a desk lamp. That's kind of the first thing that I felt when I unboxed this thing was like, this is kind of like a desk lamp boom arm, not a true microphone boom arm. And they've modified it in just a subtle way and basically sold it as a microphone boom arm. So I had to use this step adapter uh, to change the threads. Didn't like that. The next thing was this piece right here. So this is where your microphone mounts. And anytime you wanted to move your microphone, this is either loose or it's tight. And there's no real way to loosen it up on your own. You see there's a bolt right there. Sorry, it's a little out of focus and there's a, uh, a nut right there. So in order to adjust this arm right here, you have to loosen that nut up so you can adjust this and then you have to tighten that back down. Not really conducive to a very flexible recording environment where you might be changing the, the uh, sitting or standing or where you might be using your microphone. It, it doesn't really allow for quick adaptation to your, your recording needs. Another thing I didn't like about that. Uh, the integrated cable. So at first thought, I was like, hey, that's really cool. It keeps a really clean look. You don't see the cable at all. But this is not the best quality XLR cable. This is really a cheap cable that they give you with this, especially considering that this entire boom arm setup costs less than $20. So the only way to get this cable out of that boom arm, you see it goes in right there. It comes up to the elbow here, and we'll talk about the uh, downfall of that in a second. And then it comes out of the bottom of the boom arm right there, which is where you would mount this to either the C-clamp that it comes with to the edge of your desk, your table, or whatnot. Um, and then, so there's really no way to remove this cable other than disassembling one of the XLR ends, either this end or this end, and unsoldering all of the connection points where the wires go in, and then you'll be able to pull the cable back through uh, to remove the cable if you don't want to use this particular cable. The other way is just basically taking a pair of uh, wire cutters and cut the wire off and pull the cable back through, but then you've destroyed all the connections and it's just not a good design in my humble opinion because there's no way to simply remove this cable from this arm without either disassembling it or destroying the cable. 
where the cable comes up to this elbow right here is what I'm calling it. This uh, caused a lot of problems over the past couple of years because every time I would move this cable around, you could see how tight it is in there. So I would end up having to loosen up the elbow, pull some slack into this cable, and uh, every now and then it would work its way back down and you would get a really taut cable. And I was like, something's going to get messed up in this thing. So I didn't like that because there's no real... Uh, uh, soft way to, to cradle this cable at this elbow. Uh, the thumb screw right here allows you to loosen up this elbow, move it to the attitude that you want, and then torque it back down. So I thought to myself, all right, so they thought about that, but why couldn't they have put that down here as well? So, kind of an oversight, in my humble opinion. They had one, they could have added another one and made it a, a much better experience of using this particular uh, elbow. Let me squeeze it back together here real fast. Uh, the last thing that I did not like about this is these springs. You've got two stabilizing springs here, and you've got two stabilizing springs up here at the elbow. Every now and then... I would move this boom arm and I would hear this. You hear that? That's annoying, especially when you're trying to record. And if, if you ever remember those plastic microphones that you can still get today at kind of junk stores or dollar stores um, and play around with them where they echo your voice, they have a coil, kind of a spring wrapped around inside of the plastic microphone that you talk into the microphone and it gives an echo. Well, I have very sensitive ears and I could hear these springs every now and then when I'm recording and I would hear these things resonating, uh, the the uh, the sound uh, of, of it just moving because I was talking. That was really annoying. So all in all, really not a good quality microphone boom arm uh definitely an entry level boom arm at best uh not bad for like a kid that wants to make youtube videos and get its microphone off the desk or something like that not a bad boom arm for that but if you are into professional recording you want to avoid things like proprietary cables running through the boom arm itself uh no way to cradle the cable at the elbow um, no way to effectively m move your mount joints without basically bringing a toolbox into your studio every time you want to, you know, move your microphone around. And, and more importantly, this is not a long boom arm. Each one of these segments is about 12 inches. So you get about 24 inches of span at the most when you're using this, this boom arm. So 24 inches of reach, if you will, when you're using this boom arm. Not a whole lot if you're used to standing or sitting and you kind of do a little bit of both. You don't get a whole lot of height when you only get 24 inches of, of span. Now, I do use a Heil 12-inch riser for my boom arms, and I have that mounted behind my monitors. Uh, so it did give me an extra 12 inches on uh, the mount point. But even with that Heil riser, this still was really... Uh, challenging to use in everyday use. So now that you've seen an entry-level boom arm, let's take a look at the boom arm from Wow's Box. This, my friends, is my brand new microphone boom arm, courtesy from my good friends over at Wow's Box. This is known as the Duofire Professional Microphone Stand. It's a swivel mount studio boom arm that is built with quality where you can use it in radio, broadcasting of any kind, studios, or even home use so very very versatile microphone boom arm and the first thing you notice it is much longer than the entry level boom arm that we just took a look at this one has a horizontal and vertical reach of about 37 and a half inches and when you mount it to the desk stand that comes with it you get a full 360 degree rotation, which makes it very, very convenient to use. Let's take a quick, close look at all of the elements on this. The first thing you'll notice is the mount rod right here. Now, this is where my shock cradle mounts in. I did not have to use a thread 
modifier to mount my shot cradle or my microphone. And you can see that I have a Chaotica eyeball with my microphone inside and a shot cradle. This thing is designed to support microphones weighing right around a pound and a half or 700 grams uh, to right around 2.4 pounds uh, or 1.1 kilograms when you combine it with a shock mount. They say it will support a Blue Yeti very, very well. This is not a Blue Yeti. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020 mounted in there. Now, this thumb screw right here is for this shock mount but right on the other side you see that they give you a thumb screw right here at the bottom knuckle where you can adjust that rod where on the other microphone boom arm you had to have a tool kit with you to be able to loosen or tighten this particular rod i love that addition to this microphone boom arm. Now, while I have it in this configuration, let me swing it back here because I think it'll show a little bit better. You can see right here, there is a notch as well as a guide right there where if you want, you can run your cable through the armature of the actual boom arm itself, just like the entry level one I showed you a few minutes ago. Now, I'm not a big fan of that for the various reasons that we talked about before. One, you have to disassemble an XLR cable to send it all the way through. I just don't want to be hassled with that. But should you have the desire to actually have your cable ran through the arm, they give you the capability to do so. Um, I actually ran my cable of my very own on the outside and securing it to the uh, arm using self-sticking Velcro. So I was able to pick the quality of cable that I wanted and run it just on the outside of the elbow using some self-sticking uh, Velcro. Now, up here at the top, you'll notice something that's a lot different than the other arm where this has a nice beveled curvature to that top of the elbow where it securely cradles that cable around the top of the elbow nice and delicately so you don't get any cable crimps as it goes around the elbow. And what you're not noticing here, let me bend this thing down here a little bit, you're not noticing any springs here or down over there. That's because the only spring on this is integrated right there into the elbow. This is where it's spring-loaded. Now, be careful if you actually buy this elbow because it's it's held together with a piece of cardboard when you get it. And when you take that cardboard off, this thing wants to launch completely out into a vertical mode, kind of like that. So just be careful when you uh, take it out of its packaging and hold the arm while you take off the securing cardboard for the very first time so you don't get this thing launching off into the, to, the, uh, to the wild blue yonder. So again, the only spring is right there and that leaves a very clean look to your overall elbow. So you've got the mount point for your cradle uh, and your microphone. You've got your cable here or you can choose to run it down through the arm right there. The elbow right here has the integrated spring, so very, very clean, and you don't have to worry about any noise on the actual elbow when you're moving it around. And all the way down here to the bottom, you see that there is the exit point. Should you want to have your cable mounted through the armature, you can actually exit it out through that piece and have your cable secured and protected. So overall, this is a really, really nicely designed, quality build, professional grade microphone boom arm. Now, I talked about the Heil Riser. I'll put a link for that in the video description below. That's the Heil Riser right there. It's 12 inches. Excuse the wireness behind my, my monitor here. That's the back end of the monitor. That gives you 12 inches from the desk all the way up to the mount point, and this fits perfectly into this mount joint right here, and then you secure it with that thumb screw right there. I leave mine kind of loose because that way I can move the microphone around where I want it to. So this is the Duofire Professional Boom Arm 
for broadcast, radio, voiceover, home studios, whatever you want to use it for. This is by far my favorite new addition to the studio. And I want to thank my good friends over at Wow's Box for sending this over to me. And uh, this is definitely a, a welcome addition to the studio versus that entry level one. Again, it has a horizontal and vertical reach of about 37 and a half inches with full 360 degree rotation. It supports up to uh, 2.4 pounds of gear uh, or about 1.1 kilograms at this mount point. So it should easily support a Blue Yeti should you want to use a Blue Yeti microphone, which are big, bulky, heavy microphones. Uh, other than that, I've got a, uh, a mic shot cradle here with an Audio-Technica AT2020 and the Chaotica eyeball right here. It supports it plenty without any sag. I can move this thing around where I want it. I could be down here next to the monitors. I could be up here standing directly and talking into the microphone. Heck, if I really wanted to, I can reach this thing all the way up and touch my microphone to the roof here in my studio because this thing is that tall. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Wiles Box, for sending this over. Again, I will put a link in the video description below should you want to get a Duo Fire professional microphone stand for your very own. I hope you like this video. Until the next one, you're one of a kind, you're beautiful, stay positive, life's too short. May the force be with you.